Oh wow. Okay, I'm live. I've got one viewer. I think it's me. Turn the volume up a little bit on the mic. I don't think that's too loud. It's as loud as it'll let me get. Okay. I'm just going to pop over to Illustrator. Um, let me know if the background music is annoying. I'll try to pick something nice that would play through. Anyway, right now I'm working on the center of this flower. Um, this is a morning glory. And I'm going to create the center of it right now with gradient mesh. I've created the leaves for it. And you can see here, I'll select the leaf. We can take a look. With a mask around a gradient mesh object. And we're using the gradient mesh tool to give it gradient kind of characteristics, right? So, boom, right? Oh, I kind of like that. Keep it. So, anyway, it's masking it off. Or an Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. You can go and get in isolation mode with this if you want. And operate it on operate on it that way. If you drill all the way through, you can get through the mask and see how it actually works. This is the highlight right here. So you can see it's actually a square that's been manipulated by my evil plan. So that's what I'm working on right now. We're going to do the center. The center needs to be indistinguishable as, you know, it, you, sh you can't really see these lines here and where things end because in nature, it's more of a endless chasm that just goes down into this maybe a darker area. And then there's a stamen or some kind of, um, you know, apparatus going on here. So we'll, we'll work toward that. I've got a layer going here in Illustrator. I'm going to switch over to see if you can see the Chrome. You're not able to see the layers palette and all the things in Illustrator, unfortunately. I'll work on making that happen. Right now you're just seeing this boring, um, you know, shifting image and seeing me work on it might be kind of annoying for you. If so, I guess post a comment if you can. Oh yeah, comments are not allowed because it's supposed to be for kids. Charlie told me about that. So next one we'll make sure it's for adults, but I don't know what the rebroadcast rules are for Facebook. So let's, let's ease into that, shall we? All right, so here we go. Um, it's vector, it doesn't look like a photograph, but if you zoom out, you'll see Part of my plan here is going to be incorporating this flower with this character here, who is obviously a kind of a cartoon praying mantis based on a drawing I made right here. Right? And in a previous video, we went over this drawing and we ended up with this, which I'm pretty happy with. It could use a little work, but maybe one of my minions will come in and fix it. But we're working on this now, so let's jump over. Let's lock everything we don't need to, to operate on and go ahead in. Kind of... Working with my palette here, just making a um, a stroke of red over the top of this so that it doesn't uh, it it distinguishes itself from the main drawing that we're going to be hopefully improving with this. What I'm doing right now is I'm using the Bezier pen tool to go over and create a vector shape that has a specific shape to it, not just a square or a circle. It, it can be any shape, right? 
And these little Bezier curve points that you see here, I'll drag one so you can see it, hopefully. Yeah. Um, as you can see, that controls the curve. And the idea here is to make something that can be reused, maybe, in different ways. But for now, it's to be convincing enough for us to be able to move forward with using this character in some way with um, using one of these or more of these in a scene. So um, anyway, this is the, the mask that I'm going to use for this middle part. Okay. And we'll make a, a mesh part now for that mask to cover over. And that's where the gradients and things like that are going to happen. You'll see in a second what that means. So put that mask there. Um, I don't necessarily need this to have a stroke to it anymore. We'll make it have a yellow background color like the, the actual background. Something similar to the actual background. A little lighter maybe. We're adjusting our color palette off screen. You can't see these floating palettes, but yeah, that looks like it's about right. It's a little lighter, right? I think that's good. We'll find out. We'll mask these off, right? Make a clipping mask, it's called. We'll go into these, and now whenever I select it with the direct selection tool, you can see it's a square. And we're going to subdivide it into a gradient mesh, because we're like that. We can do that. Um, let's be somewhat conservative and break our color right here, see if that works out. Give it a center line, maybe. And now all of these control points can affect things. We want a solid color on the bottom and we want to gradually go transparent as it goes up. We need to see where that happens, I suppose. So let's make this, well, let's assume this top one here would be transparent for now. And you can see it affected it a little bit. See that? Um, and now we're going to see what happens when we make this partially transparent too. And you can see it's sort of coming through here. You can see what, what's behind it. Make it a little more opaque. All right, we sort of see where the lines begin to show. So let's subdivide this again into something that can really be useful. All right. Um, and we'll make this the transparency. Okay, so now the back over here is a little bit irrelevant. We've masked it off a little bit with this transparency. Let's get these guys down a little bit. Since this is a symmetrical view, I want to make sure that we apply the same transparency evenly to both sides, or else we're not going to have a good simulation of reality. Okay, that's not going to work. So let's bring it down a little bit more. And verify it's zero. Bring these down a bit. And you'll see as it happens whether it works or not. Okay. Same thing here. Now we're getting the appearance we want a little bit. 
Um, let's move this out slightly. And we should see the um, arc disappear as we sort of get it right. All right, now we're almost at a convincing level for this to be just a good gradient that'll take us to the next step. That's pretty good. You're not going to ever see it this close. If you zoom out, you can see now there's a realistic transition. posted this link on Facebook, so if somebody followed in from Facebook, hello. All right, now we're going to continue. What I want to do is maybe here, I want to, instead of being 0%, I want to be, I want to still have some transparency, and I want this to be 100 again. What I want to do is I want to see how far I can take the yellow see if this works. So we're partially there now. Let's cut the transparency in half here. I'll make this zero. And see if we can bring it in. Let's we'll see if we can do it and break the uh, busy curve here. Get our levels of gradient figured out. All right, good. Oops. So I need to do the same thing over here. I'm using the pen tool. And yep, that's a little sloppy, but sometimes that's like a happy accident, right? Um, in this case, I don't think it hurts anything, but it's still sloppy. So let's return to it here. Um, a little more aggressive with this one. I lost my selection. Increase the opacity there. Okay, so let's move these down now. Six to zero. And this one move down as well. And again we're trying to get rid of these arcs on the side. But not not don't going too crazy about it. There are flaws right in this. It's it's not perfect. Um, but I want these lines to be prominent right because you know, from there now let's let's increase the um, illusion of it going into the flower right because it's it doesn't stop right here i did think it was important to get that yellow right first because it's color but let's um let's go in here now and uh and see if we can make it look like a um a way to enter into this whole other thing. So I just cloned that out of there. And um, just thinking out loud here how I'm going to do this. Go in here and just select everything. 
change the opacity to 100 for any that are not 100 and give it a different color. Um, in this case, let's just go all in. It's not going to be full black. We can always change that. So you can see, barely see through where the mask is. All right, here we are. So now we're gonna put it into place. It's gonna obscure everything, of course, and look horrible, but we'll take it from there. We're 25 minutes in, it seems like we just started. These will get better as we go. And hopefully I'll learn how to show, show the tools that I'm using to do this a little better. So there's a point. Um, let's just try some things. Okay. So now we see like this weird halo effect that's happening. Can we just eliminate that and not use this thing at all, but use just a circle and then mask it? I'm thinking we can. So rather than use this again right now, we'll use that as a backup plan. Put that over here. What I want to do now is just make a circle. And it'll be black now, like this, um, and I guess we have to see what it looks like when it's in place, but idea would be like that, and then maybe we break it apart, a little mesh. And then these top, this top one, be zero. Just experimenting here with this to see what is possible. Where are these guys in there? Okay, I don't hate that. I'm not a huge fan, but I'm, I don't hate it. Or could we mask this and say it's what it is? No, it looks too odd. Let's bring this down a little. Yeah, down a little because it's more of a home, right? Going into... Let's just make sure the color is correct because I don't like that black over there. It's Okay, um, we don't, these flowers are underneath this thing, so we can't use them to mask it. But they need, this needs to be in front of the flowers, so we'll mask it manually. But let's, let's fiddle around more with the scaling of this thing. See if we can make it fit a little more precisely and not obscure what we're trying to do here. Okay, that's sort of looking better. Obviously this overlap here is going to go away. The gradient's pretty abrupt though, huh? Let's make the gradient a little less abrupt. It's starting, starting to make me angry. Okay. So there, it's a little smoother. Do the same thing over here. It's going to be a little more forgiving on the sides here, perhaps. Okay. Feeling a little better about that. Yeah. 
Maybe a little bit more room here. And a little more of that. No? Abort. Yeah. It's almost acceptable. We don't want things to be too straight up and down. That's one of the problems with this composition. So we'll fix that by, in the final piece, whenever we do that, we'll place it in a way that the character is with it and it's not necessarily in this up and down position because this is a morning glory so these I guess these are more like vines or they grow on vines so you'll see the green leaves and stuff maybe character guy can stand on one of those it just has to be convincing morning glory that is the goal of this I'll tell you why at the end so anyway there's our apparatus in the center here it's not perfect we don't want it to be too perfect and too smooth this is a flower so it's going to have some flaws you can even look in a real flower and see spots and lines and things all over the place our goal here is to simulate as much of that as we can while keeping a stylized look for the purpose of illustration we could trace a photograph if we wanted a photoreal look to it. In this case, we don't want a photoreal look. We want something to simulate reality. And it's more delightful in the way that a painting would be delightful. What, what appeals to you more, a painting of a scene or a photograph of a scene? Um, I guess it's a matter of personal taste, but I think more potential is is present. It's more exciting to look at an interpretation of reality. I think that's what we're going for here. Could even be a surreal approach. Now we could, you know, we could make this easier and just move this up here to mask it off and not have to mask it at all. Um, but that puts the flower petal in this new layer here. Let's make sure it's labeled right, but I'm good with that. Now we could go with a lot more detail on this too. Don't think I haven't noticed that. I also think that these lines ending right here looks fake. I think they should end down here now. And I think they would naturally, they wouldn't just end here. I mean, in nature, they may, but. Okay, so I selected that, I thought I did. Here we go. Let's select just the end of this. Bring it down as far as we can. All right, so the centers we see have to come out. So we'll unlock everything. And let's bring the centers out again and on top. I'm trying to make the layers here. I'm working with the layers as I talk. So again, I'll fix that in the future. So you know what you see what I'm doing with these lay with these palettes and Illustrator. Unfortunately, right now you can't. You can just see the drawing, but if you know the, if you know Illustrator, you might um, might recognize some of the things I'm trying to do here. All right, so it's a lot of locking and unlocking right now as I figure out how to organize things. I want to 
make sure this is in front. This layer is becoming something different than what I wanted it to be. That's okay though. We'll figure it out. Now we zoom out to around the resolution I think it's going to need to be. And it's starting to look pretty good. I'm bothered by this line though here that shows up. I don't want to figure it out right now because it'll be boring for you guys, but let me just bear with me here. Bear with me. All right. So now we see we have our flower. Um, it has this cone below it. That's the leaves undersides. There's areas where we could see the underside of the leaf too, and it would add a lot of realism to the, to the portrait, to the piece. Right here specifically, right up front, there's this point right here where you'd be able to see maybe the underside of the leaf. Let's do that just for the hell of it. We're going to trace it in red and then fill it so that it looks like it's part of part of this. But let's first see if we can just copy a segment or two of this mask and then paste it. Well, okay, we did. Um, do we need all of it? No. We need just part. And we don't want to make full yet stuff. We want to hide it and make it red, like I said. So now we have the exact same line as the um, as the as the outer mask. Obviously, you can do it by hand, and right, it can be a little bit incorrect. It depends on what you're up to. But right now, we want to make a pretty convincing little underside of um, hello Mr. Guy all right so there it is and we want to make a line going across that's going to make it look like it's underneath you'll see what I mean when I do it so it's going to be an angle and that fold would be going down on the curve. So we'll end the line here. Oops. We'll end the line here. And, oops, sorry. What we want to do is bring this out. I want to introduce a curve right here, so. Of course, this layer's underlying color has to be something I can't see very well. Let's make it something I can see. Magenta or something? No? Whatever, it's better than what it was. Um, well, we'll just make the stroke blue so you can see it that way. Um, so we have our structure thing here. Let's move this and see if it's around what we want to do. Yeah, that's around it. So we'll change back to the path tool and give it some Bezier curves and make it. Yeah, there we go. Maybe a little more subtle. All right. That looks like it might work. So let's get rid of the stroke. And now we're going to just go crazy. Let's just uh, create a gradient there. It would be getting darker as it moves farther away from the edge, I would think. So let's get a dark color in there and just work with it. All right, maybe a little darker. And then toward the edge, it would pick up pretty much what 
is on the outside. You can see a line between them too. That's going to be a problem. So we'll we'll fix that in a second with by adjusting the outer masks bezier curves. Switch over. And make sure my audio is okay. All right, good. Hopefully, I'm not crackling too hard and stuff on the streaming side. I'm gonna peer over at my streaming. Okay, cool. No viewers. Oh well. Um, yeah, so that doesn't really work. This color needs to be brighter. Let's hide the lines so we can sort of get a gander at it. Do some crazy stuff and see if we can force something to happen. Okay, that's kind of what we need to do. We need to make it just start over there. And the rest would be a darker blue than this. And maybe even darker. A little more green. Okay. We'll make this one a little darker too. And a little agree. All right, so now we see something that doesn't look intentional, but it's a little detail that adds to the realism, I think. Adds to what the picture does. You can see I kind of did the same thing over here. I unlock some of this stuff. Um, but I was attempting to do the same thing over here. I think it got too late and I got tired. Um, let me move that. Complete this effect. And maybe get a little darker on that one too. Let's see. Because there's there's some darker ends on these leaves whenever you see them and they're they're more wrinkly and darker. So we can we can go with it a little bit. As you can see underneath these, I'm reusing this patch that I used for this mesh that I used for this. I tried to reuse it. It worked out okay, I guess. I think I, if I did it again, I wouldn't reuse it. I would just make a new one. But it was really a pain in the ass to get this color like that. And I had to figure out how to get these white stripes to do this. These lines right here, these centers are not really that great either. They're so visible. Let's decrease their visibility a little bit. Okay, that looks more realistic. Not that realism is our goal here necessarily. Okay, that doesn't bother me. Bother me. And we see here there's an arc. All right, is there going to be underneath? No, but we can show we can show a, a bit of light on this arc to accentuate the fact that it's going from here all the way down this leaf down to this part here. If we can, it'll add something to the piece. So. Um, here's the top of it. We want that to change and be more out here. I'm going to move this underlying one to right here so we can maybe sweep up this arc with gradient. This needs to stay because it controls the amount of white being shown. So the effect would have to be within this region right here. Is it worth it? I think so. Why not? Move it. Move this a bit. Not even that out a, a tad. So again, we Bob Ross said it best, right? 
It's the happy little accidents that you have that determine the value of, of the journey itself. And they're unexpected, which makes it all the more inspiring to work in this way. There's some mystery around it. Now, I know that you're looking at this arc and saying, oh, you can see the arc, dude. I know. We're not focusing on that right now. Get over it. Um, okay, so here we start to see what I'm thinking about. I just did that without really thinking about my loading my brush or my color the way it should be. Um, but we want the highlight to be slightly lighter than what we see. Um, I kind of liked what I saw, actually, during that attempt. So um, let's go ahead and drop it on there and see what happens. All right. Um, it's risky. It's risky. Let's even it out. I'm not hating it yet. You can see sometimes the mask gets in the way. So, okay, so this is going to be coming up in an asymmetrical way that agrees with our philosophy of not making things too symmetrical. I may even get crazy with it and go remove symmetry after I'm done here. I'm willing to go that way. Um, so this is messy, but this is how you'd see it in life. You'd see folds and weirdness, and you'd see artifacts, and in so doing, collectively, you wouldn't see them. So this would look like a beautiful flower when taken in the context that it needs to be in, ultimately, which is with the character in there somehow. So we're getting to the point now where we've kind of taken this another step. It might be subtle, but we have. We really have. Let's see if we can round it out with a flourish of um, like this. I think that's very nice. Now, um, uh, just so you see, maybe a preview of next time where we're going to begin, we're going to begin uniting these two concepts into one, into one composition. Is it going to be funny? Is it going to be scientific? I'm not sure yet. So we'll unlock everything that we need to unlock here, and then I just want to show you, for instance, what this could look like in context. Um, so let's make another artboard real quick and drop it on there, group it, and then um, you know, just show you what kinds of things are possible. Typically these flowers are pointing up. Guess why? That's right. Any number of answers are correct on that. You can see we now get a, a look here on it. And we can see that we can add some highlights as we need to, if, if necessary. But it also works when you when you zoom out uh, as a flower. In fact, we see the edges may be a little bit too sharp, and that's where we go into Photoshop, perhaps, and um, and do some things on it. Maybe we'd want to take this last ten minutes and show how that would be possible. So I'll copy it. Let's go into Photoshop. Now let's see if I can switch my stream to to um, show a different output. No, I sure can't. That would be really cool if I could do some switching here. Um, I'll look into how to do that. And what I'm trying to do right now is switch between windows so that you can see Photoshop. That'll have to be for next time. Next time we'll use this guy right here and fix it, fix it up a little bit. Admittedly, there are some problems with it, but also roughen it up a little bit too. There may need to be some fibrous 
lines of color going through here. I don't want to get too photorealistic because it'll take away from the actual character, and this might be be emphasized a bit in the final piece. But next next week we'll start on some leaves and vines that go around this, and I'll have that all set up, show you how to get kind of organic feeling around this um, this morning glory, this blue morning glory. You can even make your own color morning glory. I think there's some nice yellow ones as well. So anyway, that's been all for today. Thank you for joining me and uh, join me next time for another exciting Mike Likes to Make Drawings. <laughs>